Thank you for joining us for another episode of This or That, where we discuss a variety of topics to help you make the right decision for your aquarium. Today, we're gonna to introduce dosing, whether you're thinking about getting coral or maybe you've already grabbed a few. Uh, Josh, let's get into it. Yeah, where do we start? absolutely. So the reason you are gonna start dosing uh, major uh, elements, so that's calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, is because you've got stony corals or in some cases, soft corals, sure. and they need these elements to grow. So we're gonna to touch on uh, one part solutions and we're gonna to touch on the various two parts and which ones might be right for you. It's understood that this is going to vary. It depends on the system that you've got. Everybody's system, the way they manage it, the, the animals that they keep in their system, everything's gonna be a little different. So I uh, think keep that in mind as we're going through these and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll touch on which types of systems these are better for, but they're all a little different. So if we start out with one part solution, right? So we've got, these are things like Kalkwasser, All for Reef, which is from Tropic Marin, right? So there's a few of these great options out there. Now, I know you're a Kalkwasser guy. I am a Kalkwasser guy. <laughs> so talk to us about Kalkwasser. All right, so Kalkwasser is uh, amazing powder. Yep. It doses uh, calcium and alkalinity and it has the added bonus of really keeping your pH up because we want to make yep. sure our pH is kind of in that 8.3 range. Perfect option to do that. And it's uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to do it. If you already have an ETO, dose it right in with your auto top off. Yeah, I think anytime we're talking about having one thing that you add, people kind of, you know, that, that sounds really good to most people. So they're, you know, that one thing that we're, we're adding into our tank, it covers all that stuff. And there are some really great pros to it. Like you said, it does help if you got pH getting low, you can just toss a little, you know, just dose a little caulk in there and that pH will get up there for you and stay where you need it to be. Um, but, you know, there are some cons, right? So oh, yeah, there, there, there's a con to everything. I think the big one is uh, overdosing. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest one. Have you done that? I have actually done And how did that go? I was able to save the tank. Great. Great. Uh, however, it, it wasn't, the issue was how I was dosing it. And I was dosing it just in my ATO reservoir. Mm -hmm. And uh, my ATO kicked on for a little too long. Right. And uh, turned my tank into skim milk. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of, a lot of folks fun. are doing that, right? <laughs> a lot of folks are using as, as they're in their ATO, right? Yeah. In their auto top off to make up for evaporation, which is, which is a great idea. Um, but keep in mind in a lot of places, uh, you know, around the country, you know, in your house, especially you're going to get these, you know, I guess the, the, the rate of evaporation is going to change by season, especially in the summer. Yeah. It's not maybe going to be as high in the winter when you're running heat, you're going to get that higher evaporation rate. So keep that in mind. You're going to be, if you know, the corals in there, they, you know, and the, the other creatures, they don't know that the evaporation of the temperature outside is changing. All they know is that they're going to keep taking in that that calcium, that magnesium, and they're going to deplete those elements. Yep. So, uh, only thing I would uh, also say on uh, dosing with an ATO, because mm -hmm. it is like really, uh, really foolproof, calcster. That is how oh, you need yeah, to do sure. it. Don't put it in your ATO reservoir because you will chew the heck up out of your feed pump. All right, so if you're going to use Kalkawasser, what's the right size of tank, uh, type of tank, how many coral, what type of coral? Mm. Yeah, so I. I would say any you would for tank size you want to do anything that is uh, under 120 gallons and not less than 40. And as far as style of tank goes, I would use it for just about anything, whether it's a heavy SPS dominant mixed reef, uh, even a soft coral tank. Okay. Yeah, and it, you know there are instances, and again, it's going to vary from tank to tank, a person to person. But if you've got or system system, I should say, but. There, I have seen systems before that have used caulk in their ATO, and if it's a really heavily stocked SPS tank with lots of good growth, it just can't keep up. So you may just keep an eye on it. You may have to add other, you know, other types of additives. Yeah. Uh, again, we can hit this while we're here. The the one part all for reef. Exactly. So very similar, right? Uh, you're dosing calcium and alkalinity at the exact same time. All for reef has the benefit of also providing trace elements to your corals. Um, I think that. Once you've hit a point where um, you know you want to improve coloration or improve growth or mm -hmm. really try to like make improvements to the coral's health, then uh, you know go from Kalkwasser to uh, something like Tropic Marin's Alpha Reef. Absolutely, Alpha Reef is just fantastic. It's stuff. Great. We've used it on quite a few tanks around here that uh, you've seen on BRS TV before. Uh, I've not seen a bad Alpha Reef tank. 
yeah, I, I, I like it for smaller things, especially that I'm yes. not going to add any other equipment to. Mm. It's just, I can just dose that one thing yep. and I'm good to go, right? And yeah. it, you can either manually awesome. dose it, you can put it on its own single dosing head. You don't have to spend a ton of money on uh, like a four head doser yep. or yep. single head doser. It's all you need. Or just measure it out and pour it in daily. Yeah. So I'll also say pros and cons of calc wasser. Eventually, you will not be able to keep up with the demand of your coral with calc. And you can't make adjustments with calc because you're dosing at the exact same time, similar to all for reef. So that'll lead us into two part mm -hmm. and the pros of going with a two part system over a one part, which is. Like you said, the big, big part for me is just having a little bit more control. Um, so I know if I need to, if I need to, or I want to dose a custom, like if I'm having trouble keeping alkalinity up, I can, you know, maybe add a little bit more of that in than I am of the, of the two part, the calcium part of that mix. So I can, I can adjust that based off what my system is doing. Uh, and it's very easy to increase that if, uh, you know, if we start seeing demand go up, I can just add a little bit more in, but I've always had really great results out of the two parts. And so I kind of just stick with those, especially for my larger SPS tanks. So um, for me, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm a big two part guy. I yeah. like it. I mean, you're, the flexibility of two part is they're, they're hands down. Yeah. You yeah. can really dial in what you're dosing in for your calcium and, and your alkalinity uh, supplements. Uh, thing I don't like about it though, and a massive con for me is you need to stay on top of your salinity because your salinity will rise when you're dosing two parts. Yeah. Yeah. So over time, it takes a while, right? But it will. Uh, especially if, you know, if you're in a smaller system, again, just like anything, a smaller system, you're going to see that effect a lot quicker. So keep an eye on that. Um, and you can always just adjust for that. What I always do is just when my, uh, whenever I do a water change, I'll just come in a little bit lower yeah. when I put my, my, Fresh water and absolutely, my it's not a deal ba yeah. breaker uh, by any means. It's just something that you have to look out for. Yeah, always. Yeah, you, you just like anything else. If you do something, you think you still got to test. You still got to check. Uh, now I will throw out another two part fact. So something like calc, you can't make any major adjustments, right? You can't increase your calcium or alkalinity. You can only maintain it. So you have to stay at whatever level your salt mix is. That's true. So if you're going to run calc, you want to make sure your salt mix is where you want your calcium and alkalinity levels mm -hmm. because that's where you're stuck. Whereas with a two-part two system, part. you can increase, you can maintain, you yeah. have a lot more control in general. So I think that's why most of us recommend calc as an easy beginner method to just maintain your corals. And then a majority of people will move on to a two-part system with more control. Or maybe you want to use a certain salt because it's cleaner, but it doesn't have the alkalinity levels you want. You can use two-part to make up for that. Yeah, and I think, you know, if uh, I've seen guys with big, really heavily stocked, fast-growing SPS tanks that'll use caulk washer in the ATO, and they'll use a two-part to keep things where they want them yep. or to change things as they need to. I just skip that, that one step. I just use two-part because it's just one more thing I don't need to mess with. But Agreed. Okay, so we're all really big fans of two-part. Yep. Well, let's talk about some cons just to get those out there. First easiest one for me uh, is just cost over time. Right, compared to caulk. It's just more expensive. So you're going to, over time, you're going to have a higher cost, or, you know, put into your system for when you're using a two part. But uh, again, the flexibility it has outweighs it for me. Right on. And uh, what I would say is you need to be cognizant about how you're dosing two part. Mm. So you want to uh, be yes. dosing them into a, both your soda ash and your uh, calcium chloride into an area that is turbulent. So mm -hmm. it gets mixed into the water. And you want to have those dosing at different times. Different times. Otherwise, you are going to end up with a lot of precipitation, probably in your return uh, pump section of your sump. And it's not going to go into the water. Brings yeah. me to my biggest con, which is cost. So if I'm dosing and I'm sick of doing it by hand, I want to run a dosing pump. Now I need one, two, three dosing pumps rather than just one. Um, I need three different locations. I need yep. to program them at different times. Yep, absolutely. And so, for, so for me, if it was... If I'm using a bigger system that's heavy on SPS, I'm probably going to use a two-part. If it's a smaller system uh, where I don't have a lot of growth going on, I'm probably going to use something like an all-for-one or all-for-reef, just a one one part. So it mm. just depends. So should we talk about the uh, elephant in the room? There are some major pros to calcium reactors, but there are also some very serious cons. Oh, yeah. And one of the first cons, if we're talking about cost, one of the first cons of a calcium reactor is they're expensive. Um, there's a lot of extra gear. You've got the CO2 tank, you've got the, the reactor, you've got the reactive media you have to replace. So there's the a lot that goes duty into dosey pump, the dosey pump. Dosey pump. So all these yeah. things that go into it. So it is a complicated system. However, uh, in the past when I've used one, once you get them dialed in, man, they work great. Yep, I would agree with that. So they're very set it and forget it once you set it. 
Once you, it, you, it takes a while to get it dialed in. Once you get it there, though, it really does work well. My biggest problem with calcium reactors and the ones we've run here, I ran one on uh, an older Reef Savvy tank, is I had to go drive to like a welding supply store. Yeah, around here there's a CO2 tank. Two tank yeah. filled, and yep. it wasn't often, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's a pain. It's a pain, and, and the barrier to entry is pretty huge on these because they are so expensive. But over time, compared to two-part or even Calc probably over time, you're probably going to spend less. Sure. Uh, I would say a pro on this though is that despite contrary uh, information, these are actually really easy to set up. Uh, we've done a lot of videos, uh, investigates wise, mm -hmm. and you know, it's as simple as pegging the pH inside the reactor uh, chamber itself to whatever media you're using and that melting point. And it's really just a matter of adjusting how much effluent coming out of that, you're dosing into your tank. Yeah. And it's a natural solution. It really is. Basically yeah. what you're doing is you're melting dead coral skeletons to feed your living coral skeletons. Not but necessarily for beginners though. Definitely not for beginners. I would not even consider a calcium reactor if you are just getting into the hobby. Uh, that's where a two part or you know, all for reef is the way to go. But great systems, expensive. Uh, I know there's people out there right now that are like, yay, calcium reactors. They're finally talking about them because they, they just are great. They're just not common anymore. Well, we're not going to talk about it anymore. So <laughs> one part solutions is probably what we'd all agree to start with, something to get you into maintaining those levels for your corals. Moving on to a two-part solution with maybe a little more control. Yep. And then, uh, you know, if you're someone who likes to tinker with equipment or you want to try something new, calcium reactor might be for you. Uh, but hopefully we've helped you make the decision for your first or uh, your higher demand tank. Yep, absolutely. Thanks. And we will see you next time.